Black Summer before the war, those gay coupon-free days when eggs still came out of shells and the government only took some of your money, when you and millions like you swarmed to the sea and the air rang with shouts of, any more for the speed boat, Wilkes, Dutton's of plate, when you could taste the salt in the air, the hops in the beer, and still slip up on a piece of orange peel. How long is everybody going to be? Stronger to escape before dark at this rate. Where's May? Oh, she has to go and fall down the garden and graze her knees. Celia's just cleaning her up. Messing about, messing about. And what's happened to Dad? He was here just now. In the garden. Well, tell him to hurry up. All right, all right. Six home, four away, two draws. It's uh, off the bed. Yeah, may as well start the season with a bang. That's right. Yeah. Dad, they're waiting. All right, Celia, I'm coming. You might just snip over and water them tomatoes in the evening, George, if we don't get any rain. Of course I will. Have a good holiday, Jim. Cheerio. Are you coming with us or not? You'll be putting a ring through your nose next. All right, Popsy. Just one little turn, I'll be right with you. Hurry up, Celia. Oh, Celia, did you pack my old swimsuit? Yes, but it's shrunk. Never mind, I'll get into it. You are, Celia. out in triplets. Mrs. Hackett. Hello, just off. Yes, here's Pickles. I told the milkman the bacon up to call. A good time, love. Wish I was coming with you. Wish you were. Messing about, messing about. You've got your pipe, Dad. You think of everything, don't you? Good job somebody does. Sure we haven't forgotten anything, Tom? Forgotten anything? We brought everything but the kitchen stove. Well, I don't know why we've left that. They moved the palm, it used to be at the bottom of the stick. Mm. An account of the dogs, I suppose. Afternoon, Mr. Coulson. Oh, Hi, Emmy. All right, how'd you tell? It's to be here. Is this me expecting you? <laughs> Same old Emmy. Oi, Lady Muck. Come back here and carry some of this luggage. Oh, well, I'm not Oh, I know, but we're all on a lady. Where's Johnny got to now? Oh, I don't know. Are you, Mrs. B? Bless you, my dear. I'm well enough. That's much. You're looking silly. Do you think so? And you, my dear, you're quite the young lady now. Oh, her. She's reached the ever so sweet curl up in a little ball and dream about Charles Boyer, eh? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. You'll get over it. Oh, oh there they are. <laughs> Meg! Stop that this minute! How are you, Elsie? How are they? Rose. Oh, there are a handful of that. Hello, Mrs. B. Oh. <laughs> Still in the same old chair? Yeah. How's the rheumatics? Better since the warm weather, thank you. <laughs> I made you a cup of tea. Oh, well, you know it. Tom won't be a minute. He's just peeing to the car. You know, Jim, I always think of Celia that first year you came here. No bigger than Meg and chasing the boys on the sand. Uh, it's finished us up to them capers now. Oh. This little girl don't chase them. No, but this little girl finds them. What's more, she's putting ideas into Celia's head. Don't be silly, Dad. I can look after myself. Seem to have heard that before. Oh, come on, Celia. Oh, drop this off at our room, will you, Doc? Which is it, Mrs. B? The corner one on the second floor. I put you two girls in the double opposite. Okie doke. Okie doke. No sooner in the house than out of it again. Well, you can't blame them, Jim, after being stuck behind counters all the year. Here is the first news, copyright reserved. Herr Hitler spoke for 20 minutes this morning. Emmy, switch that off. Of See if you can get dance Munich. music on regional. The news is nothing but that man Hitler these days. Ah. Emerald. Thank you. 
There's a crack for you. What a girl, eh? You're going to be here for long? Maybe. I'll be here for two weeks. <laughs> what a break for the girls. Yeah, I get around. I'll bet. How's it going, Alec? Oh, hello. Phil, meet the boys. Sam, Joe, Eric. This is Phil, the loveliest girl in Eastgate. I didn't get your friend's name. Oh, she's my sister. Go on. I'd like to dance, Phil. Hey, I saw her first. Okay, I'll have the next one. Oh, just a minute, fellas. I'm in on this. Let's toss for it. Any more for the sky, Lars? Come on, honey. Let's get out of here before there's a riot. <laughs> Smashing kid, that. I bet she knows I think. What's that? Would you like to dance? All right. I've been here for 20 years, but I don't feel as though I belong. I was born in Market Arbour. My father was a purser on a P&O liner. I was born just after he left the sea. My mother wanted to come to Eastgate and live with her brother. I stop to no lie, obey no dominion. The air is my kingdom, the mountain my throne. I envy the eagle, his unshackled pinion. I envy the hawk in his silence alone. I wonder if the weather will last over the holidays. Did you hear the news tonight? No. Looks like the wall will break before the weather. Oh, don't be silly, my dear. They said that last year, but it blew over. It will blow over again, you see. That's right. Bury your head in the sand like the rest of them. Something about uh, scraping up at old Harry, tearing off that stinking ballad. Alas, regardless of their doom, the poor victims play. No sense of they are the ills to come. No cares beyond today. Winchester, Southampton, Bournemouth, Paul, Wareham, and Dorchester. The special evacuation trains for the Hampshire and Dorset areas are standing at platforms 3, 5, and 7. seem to be taking a deuce of a lot of stuff with you, old man. How long do you think this war is going to last? Nothing like being on the safe side, Caldicott. Personally, I think it'll be over by Christmas. <laughs> That's what people said in the last war. Well, last time they said it'd be over by Christmas, and it wasn't. But this time it might be. Hmm. I doubt if that's very sound logic, old man. The three children! Now, come along! These cops can keep together! I thought they were running special trains all day, evacuating children. Yes, they were. Perhaps these are some that have been left over. Anyway, we needn't worry. This is the first task compartment. Expect your mother, Islington, rear into the train. Come along, Fox, to be here. You, my dear, me. And I'm not rushed to Ten more in this compartment. Do
Oh, President Correct, Colonel. About time. Why, you popped here for a quick one at the red line. I might have guessed it. Here we are with the country of it and on the brink and you can't even pass the red line. Well, I was fortifying myself, that's all. Well, the only fortification we have got. Here, hang on to the ammo. Been rumbling back from Dunkirk ever since I came on duty. Train load after train load off. We've got four-fifths of them back. According to the six o'clock. Thank God for that. Well, we're the advance guard now, my lad. Front line, that's us. Shock troops. Yeah, just about describes it. So long. Evening, Dad. Evening. Good evening, sir. Hello, Dad. Hello, dear. just putting the children to bed. She had a letter from Tom this morning. Did she? That Phyllis is out there with young Wheeler from the tobacconist shop. I told her before I don't like him. I don't like his family either. Chucked up, young puppy. He's just got back from Dunkirk, Dad. Dunkirk? On 48 hours leave. Hmm. When did he go to France? Around Christmas. And nobody told me. He said his name wasn't to be mentioned in this house. Supposing I did, there's no harm in telling me a little thing like that. Anyway, what she want to keep him hanging about the doorstep for? She might at least invite him in the front room. He's feeling. Uh. Landed! Landed! You won't go to sleep till you've been up, Dad. All right, Johnny. Here you've had a letter from Tom. Mm, this morning, day to day from 28. He's somewhere on the Egyptian frontier, by the sound of it. Not right, over. So. Oh, I see you've got the pullover Celia knitted for him. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me young Wheeler had been to Dunkirk? Didn't know myself till this evening. Laugh, I thought I should have died else. Props saluted him. No, <laughs> you never did. There's nothing funny about it. Why haven't you written to Tom? He's been busy. Doing what? I haven't left the shop before seven since Arlene Cole joined the Ants. Now they want to push the manicures onto me. Fed up. Celia works longer hours than you do in the drapery. Celia's not me. If you don't lift a finger in this house and you can't even find time to write to your own brother. Maybe I'll have more opportunities soon. You've had plenty of opportunities. Landed. All right, I'm coming. I had a letter from Eileen Cole yesterday. She quite likes it in the ads. I don't care for the stockings, of course, or the skirt. But the coat's cute. Across my dead body. Why? What's wrong with it? You're not joining any woman's army. It may be all right for a girl with a head on her shoulders, but for a daft Nelly like you, <laughs> in amongst all those men... I can look after myself. I have since I was 14. 14? Well, 16. Yeah, that's more like it. All right, all right. It's not often I put my foot down, and I'm not standing for any more of this act stuff. Understand? Put my supper out, Celia. I'll be back in a minute. Can you girls keep a secret? What is it? I joined this morning. The ads? Silly. Oh, you won't half catch it from Dad. Here I come. Here I come. Fee, fi, fo, sum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. <laughs> Defence regulations. In the House today, the Home Secretary announced that in view of the imminent threat of invasion, the removal of all signs and direction posts which might help the invader is now compulsory. And when I got home, there was my wife entertaining two Czech officers to tea. Really? Talking of wartime sacrifices, Caldicott, do you remember old Parkinson? Chap with all those rubber plantations in Malaya? Yes, that's the fellow. You remember his valet, Orfinch? Yes. He's evacuated to Western Supermare. Eh? Parkinson's simply living, hasn't dressed himself for 30 years. What are you going to do about it? Follow him to Western Supermare. Oh, by the way, how many mines have we laid here this morning? 
Um, 86. No, no. 87. Sure? Positive. Hmm. We must remember not to bathe here after the war. Punctual tonight, aren't they? I can't get a pair of stockings anywhere, so it slacks or nothing. Western versus Western? I'm afraid not, Mr. Buckley. Oh, well. Lunch, I think. Good night, George. See you before parade Sunday. Good night, Jim. Good night. Hello, Dad. I've got 48 hours leave. Well, have you? Hello, Dad. Phyllis is home. Yes, I know. I just dropped in the Allied Services Club to get my pipe. Supper ready? Almost. Good. Writing to Tom? Yes. Dad? Hmm? You know Marge Jones, who took my job on the switchboard at Buckland? No. Well, she's been called up, and they've asked me if I'd like to go back. What did you say? Well, I didn't know what to say. No, I see. You told Celia? Not yet. What about the kids? Well, I'd only be on nights once every three weeks. Celia's got enough to do as it is. I know, Dad, but I must make up Tom's money somehow. She'd want to rag to their back soon. Oh. I'd rather you don't say anything to Celia just now. She seems to have something on her mind. Oh, trouble at the shop, I suppose. Couldn't say. Well, I'll just pop out and post this. I'm afraid it's not much tonight, Dad. I queued up for fish, but they sold out before I got there. Yeah? Never mind. I had a surprise today, Dad. Oh? Got to go for my interview tomorrow. Interview? The labor exchange. For my call-up, Dad. I didn't know they were calling up as quick as that. Can't, can't you say you're looking after the house? Oh, I can't, Dad. I'm a mobile woman. A what? They can put me into anything anywhere. I've no obligation. What about me? I don't think they count you. Oh, don't they? Elsie will still be here. Mm. Don't let it get cold, Dad. Elsie? Celia's been called up. She's been what? Going for an interview tomorrow. But she can't be. Not already. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to tell Dad first. What's wrong? Huh. Simply that I've been offered my old job back at Buckland's and I've accepted, that's all. But you never said. Why should I? Now what am I going to do? Can't help it, Elsie. The government. Can't you tell them you've got an old father to look after? Here, here. And two children. They don't take you if you've got encumbrances, you know. But whose encumbrances? It makes a difference. Well, I was only thinking if she said that, they might put her into a local factory. Factory? Who said anything about a factory? If I'm going, I want to go into the wife's or something. Oh, so that's it. I might have known. Now, look here, my girl. You've seen our Phyllis. But Phil was fond of the boys before she went into the air. Yes, but they were local lads then. Now it's the United Nations. Boys don't worry me, Dad. No, but you'll worry them. I'm beginning to think there's something in this local factory idea. No, Dad, no. I'd hate it in a factory. Putting something into something and turning something all day. Besides, I'm mobile. None of that. Huh? <laughs> Your mother all over again. No sooner harsh word than a flood of tears. Now, come on now. 
fool yourself, dear. Yeah, that's I a good girl. Come on. I can't help it, Dad. It's not my fault. I don't want to stand in Elsie's way. The news is on. Aye? It's news time, Dad. Why didn't you say so before? <laughs> Who's truth? I mean. Send Johnny and Mick back to Aunt Amy in the country, Elsie. They're not going back to that old cow again. Dear old aunt, don't you talk about my sister like that. I don't care. She made the life of misery once and she's not doing it again. But there must be someone else they could go to. What about Aunt Amy? That's right. Make your own arrangements. Off, off. Leave the old man here all on his own. Very thoughtful. Elsie be here in the evening, Dad. Yes, when she wasn't working late or getting round with the pictures. I know how much she does about your house. That's not fair. It's true. It isn't. I do my own room. I look after the kids. That's, That's it. Now you have a go. Go on. Good news? Refer to the necessity of preserving food. Oh, joy! He urged housewives to make even greater use of the potato and the cat. You started all this. I believe you want that to leave home. I believe you want you. to leave your old daddy here all alone. I don't. Work all day. Three nights a week, home guard. Coming home to an empty house. No fire in the grate. Her out on the tiles. <laughs> no supper. No bed made. Oh, I could pass away in that bed and nobody might know for weeks. Don't, Dad, don't. I'll stay, really, I will. Oh, no, you won't. If the country needs you, it needs you. Nobody's going to say I'm not patriotic. I can look after myself. I did it when your mother died, and I can do it again. <laughs> will you two shut up? Watching these sausages is a mystery, and I hope it ain't solved in my time. What's for afters? I said, what's for afters? Take pudding. Any dates in it? Three. Three. from your present employer claiming you're indispensable, I suppose. No. Mm, that's refreshing. Ah, oh, here we are. Did you ring, Miss Wells? What's happened to my tea? I'm just bringing it. You expressed a preference for the wife, so I see. Can you type? No, cook. A little. But I don't want to do that. There's nothing else in the West just at the present moment. What about the wrens? Cooks only. Aren't there any biscuits, Lottie? Miss Carstairs had the last, Miss Wells. Again? Could I go into the act, do you think? Lottie, where's the saccharine? Isn't it in the saucer? No. Must have melted in the overflow. ADS only cooking. But I don't want to cook. You haven't thought of industry, I suppose. I don't want to go in a factory, if that's what you mean. There's nothing to be afraid of in a factory. Mr. Bevan needs another million women, you know. And I don't think we should disappoint him at a time like this. But I... The men at the front need tanks, guns and planes. You can help your country just as much in an overall as you can in uniform these days. Miss Wells, could you see Mrs. Parsons next? Her baby's been christened a three. Really, I don't know. Oh, very well. Then I'll put you down for industry. I'm sure you've made the wise decision. You'll be notified in a few days. Goodbye, Miss Crasson, and good luck. You'll probably be billeted in a government hostel in the country, and you'll live there while you're working at the factory. Come along now, this way out. Next stop, Stockford. Stockford, next stop.
Can you tell me the way to Carton Heath Factory Hospital, please? What, another member of the chain gang? No, I was just asking myself. Are you girls at the hospital? That's right. Good afternoon. Will you come this way, please? The bus is over here. I'm Gwen Price, formerly of the University of South Wales. <laughs> However, I suppose this place would be a cross between a house of correction and a home for illegitimate children. That's a lot this time, miss. Leave him here, shall I? Yes, I suppose so. Uh, fares 11 and 6, miss. What? Well, quite a ride here from Stockford, miss. Had to use up half the petrol allowance. That's quite all right, thank you. Oh, thanks very much, miss. Much obliged. Ah, not a bad sort of place, this, so they tell me. Not that I'd let a daughter of mine stay here, of course. Good evening, miss. This way, girls. Come along. Come. Manageress is expecting you all. No doubt you'd like a word with her. Mrs. Hammond, please. The new intake, Mrs. Hammond. Oh, yes. Uh, let's see, how many was it? There are 30 this time. Good. Well, good evening, everybody. First things first, I always say. Now, how many of you haven't eaten? Most of you, I expect. <laughs> Very well, then. We'd better satisfy the inner woman at once. You can sign the register and hand in your ration books afterwards. I rather gather I'm included in all this. Miss, uh, no. Jennifer knows. Oh, yes. Um, leave your bags here and we'll go straight through to the canteen. You won't be going to Thatcher till the morning, of course. Oh, this is the last. We have a shop in the post office here. And, oh, and about your room. Each of them has two beds, so if any of you came here together, you can share a room if you wish. You haven't any single rooms, I suppose. I'm afraid not. Oh. I expect you've already had the particulars. The charge here is 22 shillings and sixpence a week. The night shift's having their supper now before they go on. Let's see, that's how many left. You two are in 79 red blocks. The rest of you wait here. Now, if you want to know anything, you ask from me, Mrs. Bourne. I'm the matron here with a grown-up family of my own. So if you have any troubles, you bring them to me. I'll talk you out of them. Good night. Good night. Oh, you'll find the bathroom and the usual offices at the end of the corridor. Pleasant dreams. It's nearly blackout time. I'm bewildered by the whole thing. There must be some mistake. What? Well, where's the long bare dormitory that the Lord will provide framed on the wall as a reminder that nobody else will? Where's the rows and rows of iron bedsteads with rusty knobs and little enamel pots under them? It takes a war to do it. Homesick? No. Better unpack. You're homesick. It's different for you done it before. And what do you mean by that? Went away to college, didn't you? Oh, yes, indeed, every day, on a tram. Dad's a miner, a wonderful time we had on the dole. Shall I help you to unpack? No, it's all right, dear, it is. Expect I'll soon get used to it. Well, if you don't know when you're well off, I do. I was brought up in a distressed area. You know, lovely damp patches of fungus blossoming on the wallpaper. And the bath in the zinc tub in the kitchen, Saturday nights. Dizzy luxury, that was. So, if somebody suddenly develops a social conscience, I'm not going to sneeze at it. I'm sharing this room. Oh, are you? Hi. Just a minute. Thank you. I got here this morning. I've just been down village to buy a book. You're going to work in the factory? That apparently is the idea. Ah, they're getting all sorts now. You have got a lot of clothes. Where'd you get coupons? I bought them before clothes rationing came in. 
Stalked up and advanced like. Nothing of the kind. It's not like home here, is it? How long do you think war's going on? For some curious reason, the High Command hasn't taken me into their confidence. My dad says ten years. Do you like Robert Donut? What? Robert Donut. He's lovely. He. Are you going out? No, of course not. You do all that every night? Naturally. Well, I don't know. You're my sweetheart for all the world to see. You're my sweetheart through all its... Uh... <laughs> now, what's the matter? You do look funny. Not getting into bed like that. Like what? Not without undressing. But I have undressed. Well, aren't you going to take your underclothes off? Why? I've only got to go on again in the morning. Yeah, fussy. Too. Well, girls, most of you will be wanted in the machine shop to work on aircraft components. But first, we'll sort you out for a day or two in our training school here. Now, will those whose names I read out please stand to one side? Kathleen, run and find Mr. Forbes for me, will you? Thank you. Now, this is the machine shop. We'll all be working here. Could you come this way, please? This is it, girls. Do we have to work so? You I notified you about. We can do with them. Good afternoon. Mr. Forbes will be your foreman. 
I leave them in your tender care, Charlie. All right, I'll break them in gently. Now, you better understand there's not much glamour in a machine shop. You'll be dealing with small component parts you'll never hear of again. But you'll be indispensable, remember that. This way. Right before I get down to brass tacks. I'm putting our milling machine to begin with. The girls will show you how to work them. Uh, Jack, for the last half dozen on one to six, will you? Okay. The rest of you follow me. Now, you'll be working on bracing tube sockets to begin with. Working on what? These. There's not much to look at, I admit, but uh, the job won't fly without them. We kind of like our aircraft to stay up. It's always an advantage, I imagine. Aye. Uh, Jim, put these girls on 7 to 12, will you? Now, just watch me. You'll get the hang of it in no time. Check count, please. Thanks. I think you've got a pretty good report from training centre. Don't be scared of the machine. You'll soon be at home with it. Thank you. Nose? Yes, how'd you know? Check card, please. What? Oh. Thanks. Well, I hope you'll find this more interesting than the training school. I rather gather teacher didn't put me at the top of the class. Well, not exactly. I'm afraid I hadn't got a mechanical mind. Well, maybe you'll surprise yourself. Frankly, Mr. Falls, I don't know what you expect. I really didn't ask to be sent here, you know. I know. I don't suppose it's exactly what you've been used to, but you can't expect more than your best. You'll be doing a real job now. You'll be making something. Yes. Sockets. This morning. Oh, the one's gone to factory. Well, let me have the adjustable, will you, Alice? Okay. Put on a machine by herself now. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. She sent me this. Look at it. What's it supposed to be? Search me. What she's making or something. Correct to a thousandth of an inch, she said, but who cares, I say. Catch me, let herself be shoved into industry. Well, see, there always was a bit soppy. Look where it's landed her. Miles from anywhere and working like a galley slave. She must be ever so upset about it. Eh? Hey? Your sister. Oh. Well, believe it or not, she likes it. She actually likes it. Better than this, you know. Now, what's the matter? You're spoiling good material. You're scamping. I do wish you'd make up your mind. Last week it was output. Now I'm scamping. Ah. You're letting down your group, if that makes any difference. I must be deficient in team spirit. Isn't it awful? It's a daft sort of reply to make. Sorry. Seems to be the only sort of reply that fitted the situation. You know, you're young enough and smart enough to do a good day's work, even if it is a new experience. Who said it was a new experience? I've got eyes, you know. It's a bit different from dropping lumps of sugar into cups of coffee at a West End canteen, or something of that sort. Charlie! Hello? Not that there's anything wrong in that, only it doesn't call for the same guts. Visitors, you're wanted. OK. War effort caught it in the neck again. RAF boys, they'll be from the bomber station at Holdsworth. I heard Miss Hodge talking about them this morning. This is Mr. Forbes, our section four. Wing Commander Whitfield. Oh. All the girls in this section are new to the job. A working milling machine. This girl, for instance, she's never been in a factory before. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Might have been at the job all her life. <clears throat> Needn't tell you what that's for.
These girls come from all parts of the country. Now, this girl, Gwen Price, is the leader of this group. She's a university graduate, I believe. Cardiff College. Jennifer. Good heavens. Harry! You here? Humble working girl. No. <laughs> the laughing matter, believe me. I'll bet it isn't. What are, you, what are you doing here, anyway? Just been shifted to Holdsworth. No, Harry, no holding up the party. <laughs> I say it's wizard seeing you here. It must be six months since we met. Of course I remember. The last time I saw you helping old Toodles at Canteen near Hyde Park Corner. Remember? I'm afraid you're undermining factory discipline. Am I? Good Lord, I suppose I am. Sorry, old man. That's all right. But can I ring you? Uh, yes, do. A Carton Heath Hostel. It's in the book. Right home. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Shall we move on? If there's an alert, we'll go and work in Gibber order down. Then we shove on a special bit of music to send into the shelter and another bit to bring them out again. Very sound idea, that. I see you're having fun and games tonight. But are. I'm afraid they're not so good as they might be. There's such a frightful shortage of men. With us, it's the other way around. We've too many men. It's a pity we can't carry out a combined operation. Yes. It does seem against nature. And nature look after itself if someone can find the transport. I'll get going and make it snappy. Very good, sir. Get me Colonel Elliot at Blackstone Camp. And after that, I want the Civil Defence Depot Stockford. Which of you fellows are off tonight? What's the idea, W.O.? I'm looking for volunteers for a dance. Where? It's a factory hostel a few miles out. Oh. It's no use you taking it like that. This is a CO's idea. What are you doing tonight, Rolf? Date with a blonde job at the Marquis of Granby. And what about you? Me? I've half promised to show my granny the sights of Stockford. When I say volunteers, I mean volunteers. Now then, round up half a dozen men each. Make it snappy. There's a bus waiting outside. <gasps> Not a man in sight. That's the worst of being stuck away in country. real light on your feet. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hello. You came round the factory today, didn't you? That's right. Thought I knew your face. Oh. I think I'll sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, take your partners for a prize spot walk. Would you, would you like to? All right. Funny seeing you twice in the same day, isn't it? That's what I was just thinking. I only came to the dance because the W turned on the blue. <laughs> I like waltzing, don't you? Yes. Not much good at it, though. 
Oh, I wouldn't say that. What's your name? Delia Krauss. What's yours? Mine's Blake. Fred's Blake. Lady, and without knowing a petty pilot. <laughs> will you put them on now, or will you take them with you? Gosh, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Cooler outdoors, I should think. Expect so. Shower with them? I don't mind. Shop? No, believe it or not, we were discussing the problem of children in wartime. You know, Miss Knowles, little things that high with arms and legs. I've no doubt Mr. Forbes has a plan for turning them out on a capstan lay. Hello, beautiful. Can I have the next? Give it, buddy. I saw a first. Come over, Canada. Mr. Pecker, I just... adore him. He's framed for demolition and he dances like it. Hey. Uh, well, look, if you don't mind, I really... Paul Jones, here, here, come on, no, Jukes, have a go, come on. <laughs> Great fun, isn't it? You know, I enjoy these hops. Overcrowded, sweaty, and remarkably unhygienic, but as I say unprofessionally, what the hell, what the hell? Oh, do you jitterbug? No, I'm afraid I don't. Here they are, looking for a tutor. You know what I like about all this? There's no affectation. Genuine enjoyment. It's frightening bad form to genuine. It won't do at all. You're getting at me, Doctor. And dear Miss Knowles, I'm always being misunderstood. <coughs> Sorry. I can't think why you danced, Charlie. I thought you were one for standing on your own feet. All in business hours, Doc. <laughs> Great fellow, Charlie. I'm afraid Mr. Forbes and I don't exactly hit it off. So I deduced just now. What's that mean? That's wireless operator. I'm a wireless operator and air gunner. Oh, I see. Ever been over Germany? Not yet. Only just finished training. You're Scotch, aren't you? How did you guess? Funny. August three years ago, I was sitting in an insurance office in Sucky Hall Street, in Glasgow. Never thought I'd land up in this job. And you? Three years? Oh, I was up. No, I wasn't. I was on holiday. Where? Eastgate. We always used to go there, Dad and me and Phyllis. That's my sister. She used to like it because of the boys. How about you? Me? No, not that way. Well, I won't say there weren't boys. Any particular one? Inquisitive, aren't you? I only ask. Well, as a matter of fact, there was one boy. From Market Harbour. You... You weren't engaged to him or anything. I won't go as far as to say that. And did you like him? I've met worse. Sterling. I can tell. Come on, Sterling. Are you? We make parts for them. I know. <laughs> I saw you this morning. Of course. Oh, you did.
much of a talker. Don't suppose I can talk like that fellow from Market Talbra. Oh, him? I... I didn't know him very well, really. Didn't you? I didn't like him very much, either. Didn't you? Why? Nothing. Mind you, I don't kid myself I'm anything more than an average, ordinary sort of chap. Oh, I don't know. I'm ordinary myself, come to that. I don't think so. I suppose we ought to be getting in now. Yes, I suppose we ought. I say, how about the pictures? Thursday night outside the Astoria, 6.30. I don't mind. Now, boys and girls, take your partners for the Paddy Glide. Certainly not here. What's come over you the last few days? I'm all right. Your output's down. What's the matter? You know, may make the world go round, but won't win the war. Try to keep your mind on your job, will you? What, Mr. Forbes, no complaint? Not that I can think of. That must be quite a gap in your life. My job's to see that you do your work. That's all I'm interested in. Factory control room, yes. Air raid message purple. Okay. Hello, roof spotters. Control room here. Purple warnings just come through. Well, we've had a quiet time lately. All right, purple. Hello. Purple's just come through. Hmm. Picked a nice night for it. Until the spotters give us the raiders overhead. We know. Even when we do get that, down you go quicker, no question. Those are the regulations, that's all.
behind the concrete. Developing flares over Stockford. Looks like business. Projector on target. It's copying it good and proper. Hope my old woman's gone to the shelter. Healthy looking low starting up there, Joe. Hope it's not the Queen's arms. Only decent wallop left is Stockford. Control room, number three shop evacuated. Leave that machine and take cover. All right. I said take cover. There's really no need to shout. You know the regulations? You're going to obey orders or not? Get into the shelter. Why all this concern for little me? I've told you. Are you going to do as you're asked? Or do you want me to use force? Oh, oh. oh put me down, you... Go! Why, you... Get inside. Glad to do with me, eh? the other way. Worrying about Fred? Just thinking. Met him quite a lot lately, haven't you? All the time. Mm. Shan't see him at all this week while we're on night shift. What about the concert on Sunday? Tuesday now. You have got it badly, haven't you? I don't know. Jerry's tail, all right.
Okay, buzz him. too long. He's got his own ticket, you know. I know, but I think I'll wait a few minutes. All right. I wish I was in love. Phone in the silly kid. Oh, sir? Go on. Yes, yes, I left one for you at the hostel. No, nothing's happened. I just couldn't, that's all. No, I'm all right. Nothing's wrong, but... Then why can't you tell me? I just want to know, that's all, Fred. At least you might tell me something. Oh, I can't. Oh, because I can't, that's all. What do you mean, someone else? You know very well I... You talk as if I'd done something wrong. Well, whose fault is it, then? It's no use, Celia. Why did you have to ring up here anyway? If it comes to that, I wish I hadn't rung you. Good night. Hello, Fred. He's still there. <laughs>
morning. I do hope it doesn't affect my work. It won't. Well, I suppose you don't approve. What of? The girl going on the loose. My loose, I take it you mean tied. Of course, if the worst came to the worst, you could always carry her home. Huh? Once is enough. together. Smile, for goodness sake. Celia. Celia, I want a word with you. Well, what is it? I've got something to tell you. Yes? Well, can't we go somewhere where we won't be interrupted? Why? I can't possibly see what you have to tell me that you can't tell me here. Perhaps I shouldn't have come at all if that's the way you're going to look at it. Where do you want to go? Well, I thought we could maybe go on the bike to some pub in the country. What do you want to go there for? Somewhere quiet. All right. Please yourself. Must be a camp around here. Make up your mind, chum. Are you coming in or not? What do you say? Perhaps we could find a corner. Okay. What do you have? Why the Noah? 
Shandy? I think I'll have something a wee bit stronger. Shandy and a scotch, please. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. On your own. Oh, uh, no offence, mate. That's the army all over. Cheerio. Cheerio. Well? Well, you know, the other evening, well, it was like this. Our squadron were going in ops over Germany, and me being new, they put me down with one of the standby crews. Why didn't you tell me that on the phone? I'm not allowed to, you know that. You could have hinted. Said you might be going on a long journey or something. Oh, I didn't know what to say, Celia. I was worried. You see, I hadn't been on a trip before, and, well, I was a wee bit strung up. Excitement, I suppose. Don't look at me like that. Like what? Like you are. I thought if I tried to explain, I'd get mixed up, seeing we're not supposed to say anything, and... Well, I, well, I thought... Well, I don't know what I thought, really. Did you go for it? Yes. What was it like? All right. I was thinking of you all the time. Coming back, anyway. I've been thinking of you ever since. Wondering if you'd understand. Do you? Yes, Fred. Sure. Of course, Fred. Not so bad here, is it? No. A bit crowded. Yes. Wouldn't. Wouldn't like to marry me, would you? Pardon me, pal. I don't mind. Hand me that other pint, will you, chum? Okay. Any time is safe, Fred. What more can I? Getting married on Monday.
Don't be cross. He's ever so nice. Can you come up? His name is Fred Blake. He's a sergeant gunner in the RAF. See I told her about men. I warned her time and again. Of course, she's no alternative, I know that. It's repression, that's what it is. It's only one consolation. It's got me special leave. set of underwear. All the pink blouse I saw in Greenfields. All the nightdress. Well, take my advice and put the nightdress first. After all, that's what counts. Well, when my cousin got married, she didn't... We don't want to hear about your disgusting cousin. Cross out the walking shoes and put down the nightdress. What about the spare set of underwear? Well, he's only got 48 hours leave, you know. Well, I've got a pale blue lace set that doesn't fit me. You can have those if you like, Sonia. What? That set you showed me the other day? Yes, what's wrong with them? Well, I don't know. You'd never dare wear them, Celia. Get away with you. to get us a pass. You better start saying goodbye, kids. I'll be off. Come on, Chris. i got to go now. My sister's just off. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye, dear. Give my love to Mrs. B. I will. She's all yours now, Fred. So you're off now, eh? That's right. It's not the kind of wedding I'd like to have given you. I wouldn't have had it any other way. You're not upset, are you? Not now. Take care of me, lad. She's just like her mother. And her mother was one of the best. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Cheer up, lad. Goodbye, Annie. Goodbye, Brenda. See you Wednesday, Celia. Let us know what it's like. I might have a basin for myself one day. <laughs> <laughs> They're now on the bus. They know anyway. <laughs> Say goodbye to everybody. Oh. Goodbye, everybody, and thanks. Awfully. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Couple of nice kids. Yes, not often you see two people so happy. Not often. We're going into stock for this afternoon. I don't know. Why? It's a good picture on at the palace. Is that? Or I might take you along. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. That is, if you're going that way, nothing better to do. Oh, Mr. Forbes, I hardly know what to say. All right, if you don't want to go. I didn't say that. There must be something in the air this afternoon. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Goodbye, Gwenny. Thanks. Bye. 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 to have all those rubber plantations in Malaya. Hmm, that's right. Don't you remember? I told you I saw him once standing in a third-class corridor eating spam sandwiches. Hmm. <laughs> well, we're doing it now, old boy. No, these are sardine paste. Are they? Oh, I see what you mean. Say, Vic, you get a cigarette. Morning, again. You don't look very comfortable, Celia. Well, I'm all right, Fred. Shan't be long now. Seems as if we've been in this train since Christmas. This so close to you is a better be good. Oh, I expect it's changed, Fred. This time of the year before the war, you couldn't move on the beach. 
Absolutely packed. You've never seen so many people in your life. I don't recognize it. I don't really. Covered in landmines, I expect. Where's Mrs. Black's place? Well, it's a bit of a way, Fred. It's up past the pier. Oh, we better get moving then. Wellingtons. This is it, Fred. Here he comes. Oh, bless you. So you're here at last. How are you, my dear? I'm fine, thanks, Mrs. B. This is Fred. Well, Fred, I'm pleased to meet you. You're a very lucky young man. I know that. Don't you, Fred? Of course. This is Sam, and that's Alf down there. I've got the army billeted on me, you see. I've lost Emmy, you know. Really? They wanted to put her in the ATS, but she took an offer from the Southern Railway instead. She's a lady porter at Chichester now. <laughs> you won't be allowed out after 10.30, you know that, don't you? The front's all barricaded off. Well, that's all right. Don't expect we should want to go out much after blackout. Have you finished those taters, Sam? Very near, Mark. You want to be unpacking, my dear. The quartermaster sergeant's given you his room, the middle room on the first floor. It's the best room in the house. <laughs> Would be if the quarter blokes got it. Well, it's very nice of him to give it up. You know the way, don't you, dear? Yes, of course. You got everything, Fred. Careful of them floorboards around the wardrobe. I put a bit of extra polish on them special. Thank you. Don't mention it. See you later, then. Yes, dear. He seems a nice boy. Air gunner. And a youngster, too. I'm glad they're staying here. I only hope... What? Nothing. You get on with the potatoes. Yes, ma'am. Blackout hasn't been done, chum. Thank you. Time. Yes, thanks. That underwear fitted me beautifully. Did he like it? You are a funny kid. Of course he did. Where are you going to live? Fred's trying to find a room near his station. Well, so long as you don't have to live with his mother. I'll have another five minutes. Why not? You always do. I wish to hell Florrie had stopped playing that record morning after morning, the same old tune. The 
The RAF holds us on the phone for Mrs. Blake. What's that? The RAF wants you. Come on, quick. Oh, Gwen. Hello. Who is it? It's me, of course. You. What do you want to worry me like that for, Fred? You know right. Why didn't you say it was you? Oh, that was the exchange, Celia. They've got to get through. What did you ring me for? What sort of a room? Furnished? Oh, good. Well, I'll be over directly after this. Oh, of course I do. You know that. Lots and lots and lots. Yes, well, it's the best room I've got left. If your husband hadn't let you in quick, I'd have let it elsewhere. The old town's packed out for the Air Force. It's such a run on things. I don't know what to do, I'm sure. Can't do your breakfast, you know. Yes, I told Mrs. Blake. No, it'll have to be do for yourself on round. There's a slot meter and a gas ring, but you'll have to bring your own clock. I think we'll manage. The bathroom upstairs. Geezer's front, but the hot tap's all right. Well, I'll have to leave you now. Fishmongers are expecting a bit of skate. I don't want to be right at the back of the queue. She didn't say there's a war on, that's something. Not exactly ideal, is it? Oh, I don't know. Wait till I finish with it. I'm giving it a real spring clean. And we've got some of our own things in it. Don't think much of this. I wonder if Dad'll give us a table after the drawing room. Oh, the curtains want cleaning. Room could do with a little air, too. When can we move in, Fred, tomorrow? I've got my sleeping out pass for the day after. Oh, all right. Oh, it's a pity we can't change wallpaper. Yes. Just won't have to look at it, I suppose. Don't expect I'll want too much, Mrs. Blake. Never mind, one of these days when it's all over, we'll have a house of our own. Then we'll show them. Yes, we will, won't we? And if I get my old job back in the insurance, I was earning just in four pounds a week. Four pounds? Well, things were cheaper then. Besides, I was only 20. I'll be older when this war's over. Say, 25. But then I should be making about five pounds a week with any luck. Sterling's going in daylight ops, I expect. We could manage a small house in five pounds a week. I remember there's some wee places just outside Glasgow. A hill overlooking the fields. You're not listening. Oh, yes, I am, Fred. He said we could manage a small house on five pounds a week after the war. Well, I might ask for six. Why not? Oh, it's a Scots insurance company. Tell him you've got a wife and children to support. Children? You will have. When? When the war's over, of course. Oh. How many? Two. What sort? Boy and a girl. Sure? It doesn't always turn out the way you want it, you know. Well, this will. All right. Fred. What? You're so happy. We're always going to be happy. Every extra part you turn out means just that many extra bombers to drop just those many extra tons of bombs on some German factory. You know as well as I do, it's right here in this factory that we deliver the goods, which enable the RAF to deliver the goods, which stops Jerry from delivering his. So come, let's make a proper draw bit this week. What a jerk in it, chums. How oh, this is Blake. Very well. Did you get home all right last night, Charlie? It must have been about half past one before I got to bed. Well, mind you, young woman, we're expected to reach a record output this week. Young woman? Miss Knowles, then. I see you do your best towards it. Mrs. Blake, Miss Hodge wants you in the office. Is it about the clothing coupons? I don't know, I'm sure. Water, quick, please. Gwen. 
Celia's had bad news. You better knock off and take her home. Huh? Get somebody to take your place. When did it happen? Last night over Germany. can't see the people, you can know they're there. All the troubles and things that mean so much to them, like birth, life, death, somehow they just don't come into the picture. That's just escapism. You must escape sometimes. I'm glad Fred and Celia got married when they did. Some people think too long about it. Some people have got sense. Take you and me, for instance. Suppose we got tied up. Have you ever thought of that? It did cross my mind. Not a scrap of use. You seem very certain of it. We can't cook us so. I doubt if we can even knit. You know nothing about life, not what I call life. There's still only a moderate hand on a milling machine, and if you had to fend for yourself in the midst of plenty, you'd die of starvation. Those are only your bad points. I'm not saying you haven't got any good ones. <laughs> You're mighty generous, Mr. Forbes. As for you, you've no looks. You're old-fashioned, morbidly suspicious, dull. And your pipe makes horrible bubbly noises. Ah, we've precious little in common. Practically nothing. Well, that's nothing to do with it. If that was all, I might take a chance. Are you thinking of my parents? Partly. Because I can handle them. Anyway, they'd approve of you. Well, would I approve of them? I doubt it. <laughs> you know, Charlie, when it comes to pride, you're worse than a blue-blooded grandee. Perhaps I'm more to be proud of. The world's roughly made up of two kinds of people. You're one sort and I'm the other. Oh, we're together now. There's a war on. We need to be. What's going to happen when it's over? Shall they go on like this, or are we going to slide back? That's what I want to know. I'm not marrying you, Jenny, till I'm sure. I'm turning you down without even asking you. Do you understand? 